My father always told this to my brothers and me, no matter how hard you work, how good you are, sooner or later, bad things are going to happen. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. And every day, I try to please my mother and my father by trying to convince them that they, in fact, have raised a man. So, I just want to thank everybody, all my volunteers, all the people who knocked on doors, who rang doorbells, who made phone calls, who went online. I want to thank my wonderful campaign staff. I have been a politician for all of seven or eight weeks. How am I doing? They are now listening in ways they never listened before. They're now hearing us in ways they never heard us before. They're now going to work our problems the way they've never done before. I'm not somebody like my opponent who was born on third base and thought he hit a triple. I'm somebody from the inner city whose parents came here, as I said, with nothing, who worked hard, love you too, who worked hard who believed in the American dream. And we believe in the American dream. We believe in a country. We believe in the vision of Martin Luther King. We believe in hope, true hope, true unity. We don't divide by race. We don't divide by gender. We don't divide by sexual orientation. We don't divide by ethnicity. We don't divide by religion. We unite. My opponent referred to this recall as a move to take over California by white supremacists. Do I look like a white supremacist? Now, when you consider we don't blame, we don't finger point, we don't roll like that. But when you consider we were outspent by a factor of five, six, seven to one, I wasn't running just against Gavin Newsom. I was running against the left-wing media. I was, running, I was running against a newspaper, the LA Times, that referred to me as the black face of white supremacy. I was for, for, I'm running against a newspaper that called me everything but a black David Duke. I'm running against a media that serves as a public relations bureau for the left. And we still scared the bejesus out of them. That's why they brought in, Don, they brought, in, brought in Barack Obama, they brought in Bernie Sanders, a socialist who owns three homes, but I digress. They brought in Senator Warren. And as I said before, all they did, all they did was call this a Republican takeover. I mentioned State Senator Gloria Romero. 63% of Hispanics voted for this man just two years earlier. And Gloria, you know this, the majority of Hispanics now want him out over the issue of school choice. The majority of declined the state voted for him just two years ago. Now the majority want him out. And they're calling this a Republican takeover. It is insulting to the people of California who signed that petition and who voted yes on the recall. It is insulting. But that's how they roll. We don't roll that way. We don't finger point. We don't blame, we roll up our seas, we get back to it because as I said before, we may have lost the battle, but we're sure as hell gonna win the war. <laughs> Finally, let me leave you with this. I wanna thank all of the religious leaders who back me. Pastor, Pastor Joe Pettick of Huntington Hills, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Chino. Pastor Joe Franklin, Fresno, Pastor Paul Chapel, Lancaster. Hope I'm not leaving anybody out. You all got my love, and I love you so much. And I must tell you, I have been overwhelmed by the support. Men, men, women coming up to me, crying, saying that for the first time, you've now given me hope that things can turn around. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be asked by all the members of the media, what are you going to do next? What happens after this? Christian, thank you for your love. 
what happens after all of this. As a former radio host, let me just say this. Stay tuned. God bless you. May God bless the California. You got a state to say. Pay attention. You just may learn something. It's the sage, Larry 